Hi, and welcome to What's Next. Today, we're gonna take a look at shotgun shokes. We're gonna see how they look, the characteristics, but most importantly of all, what they do. Before we do that, let us take a look at the autonomy of a shotgun shell to get a basic understanding of what we're looking at. This is a shotgun shell straight out of the box. If we take a look inside, we can see the pellets, the actual payload. For today's test, I'm going to use a 28 grams load sized US 6, which stands for the diameter of the pellets. In this case, 2.75 millimeters. In total, there's around 320 pellets in each shell, which are all housed inside a plastic wad, a cup of sorts with multiple rolls. It ensures proper velocity, lowers recoil, protects the barrel, and also helps the choke do its job. So, a choke found in a modern day shotgun is basically a thin walled threaded tube, a device used as an insert at the end of the muscle to govern the effective spread of the pellets. And this is it. And just to quickly show you, it's a screw insert, so it simply go into the barrel and screws right in. They come in many lengths and configurations and there's a small jungle out there. Make sure to use a choke that's meant for your gun. The most commonly mentioned chokes have to be the following. Cylinder which is fully open, the improved cylinder that's more or less one quarter of a full, modified stanzas half, improved modified which is three quarters, and lastly full, the one that's going to give you the densest pattern of the bunch. Here's a comparison between fully open and fully closed. I don't know if you can see it, but the full choke is on the right and the fully open one is on the left. This is actually how they govern the spread of the pattern. It's by having different diameter. An easy way to put it is a narrower tube equals a narrower swarm. Now let's go do some shooting. We're going to switch sheets of paper after each shot to make sure we get some good results. So without further ado, the cylinder bore is first out. Shot through a Benelli M2. First shot, 10 meters. Have at it. As you can see, this spread is no joke. This was but 10 meters away and we got 45 centimeters in diameter. Same distance, but with a half choke this time. Hit it. Second shot, the half choke, a lot tighter spread. 30 centimeters in diameter. So I'm just guessing, this last shot with a fall, it's gonna blast a hole straight through our rig, but we'll see. And now for the third shot, a full choke, still 10 meters, and this time we're going to use a Beretta DT-10. Have at it! Considering we switched guns, we also switched choke system, and they do behave differently, but the main swarm here is around 20 to 25 centimeters, even though it's somewhere spread. Alright, so we are now 30 meters out and we're going to use the fully open choke to begin with the cylinder. Take the shot. And now we're 30 meters out with half choke. Hit it. And now we're still at 30 meters but with the full choke. Go for it. Alright, so we're now 60 meters out and this is a fair bit for a shotgun to go, but yeah, we're gonna see what happens. Hit it! Seeing this with a half choke with very sporadic hits, we're not even gonna bother with the full cylinder. So we're just gonna go straight for full. And here we are, the last shot we're gonna take and it's full choke, 60 meters. Final results are in, and if we take a look, we can see the first shot we took, the cylinder shot, and that's at 10 meters. That's a fair bit of spread, even at 10 meters. But if you take a look, there's not much gaps in there. There's like one over there, and that's one down here. But in the middle, in the middle of it, there's no true gaps. 
So at 10 meters, this is actually a very, very optimal choke to use, because you get a bigger spread, and the chance of hitting the target is a lot better. But if we take it out at 30 meters, sure, you got a big spread, but the gaps are just too big. You cannot guarantee a takedown with these gaps. A pigeon, or a clay pigeon at least, could easily pass through most of these, so this is too inconsistent to actually be counted on. The next one up is the half shock at 10 meters, and this one is very narrow for that distance. If you were to hit a game, say a pigeon at this distance, you would blast a hole right through, and well, that's not very optimal, is it? On the other hand, at 30 meters, it's a lot better. The pattern is still fairly consistent, sure there's some gaps here and there, but I'd blame that on the shock system, because that's not the best one. And if we take a look at 60 meters, we can see that this is just not enough pellets. There's huge gaps in the pattern. And if you were to hit a game or a pigeon at this distance, you cannot guarantee a takedown and you cannot guarantee a marked hit. Because you will get one, maximum two pellets on target and that might not be enough. And the last one we shot was the full choke. First one 10 meters and as you can see, this is very, very tight pattern. There's a lot of pellets simply not being used, you just bunched up for no good reason, so it's not an optimal range to use the full choke at 10 meters. However, it could be okay at 30 meters, because this is still a pretty good pattern. It's somewhat too, too narrow, especially around these parts, but that would be okay. However, if we take a look at 60 meters, the full choke shows what it's made of. Because this is still a consistent pattern, and you can almost guarantee a takedown and a marked hit on a clay pigeon at this distance. So, a full choke would be excellent, even out to 60 meters. So, if you take a look at this, you can see what the choke does. This is not mind games, this is actual facts. But the thing is, you need, and I say you need, to find the right cartridge for your right choke and your gun, and you need to test them out in order to find the best one, the best combination, for you. It all comes down to what your intentions are, because if you're gonna go and shoot clay pigeons for say, I would say having a good half shook, it would take you through the day most of the time. However, if you are to go hunting, you might need a full shook now and then. But the cylinder shook, there's not much uses in a hunting situation, I cannot say there aren't any, because they are. But it's simply not as versatile as the half shook is. Alright, so I guess Mother Nature had it saying in the whole thing, but thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.